What was the biggest difference last night for you guys? Um, I think we got uh, our penalty kill was huge for us in the first, not letting their top guys get in the game. And, um, you know, after that, I think we just did a good job of being physical. Um, getting in on the four check, that was the biggest thing. We were a little bit disconnected, I think, in game one. And um, we just stuck with that process for a full 60. What would be a difference for the, the bottom six of you from game one? Uh, I think just our physicality. Um, I don't think we were very physical in game one. Um, you know, sometimes you kind of get so hyped up that you almost crap the bed. I, that's kind of what I, that's how I felt at least about game one, uh, personally. And um, you know, that's how the series is going to be: ups and downs, and um, just got to stay level and and respond. And that's what we did. Zach, I know the uh, you know, your uh, big game players scored a lot of goals in second points, but what did it mean to the line to contribute? To that it was pretty big for us. Um, you know, having. Personally, that, that first goal in game one, I felt fully responsible for. So to be able to respond with a goal in game two um, kind of takes the weight off your shoulders a little bit. Is that why it looked like the, your teammates were really happy for you in that celebration for that goal, especially that moment of time? Yeah. You really see, like, such a big celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think every, you know our whole line kind of knew uh, that we didn't have the best game one, so it was, it was a relief for everyone. John's goals in front. Was there a significant emphasis on making sure you guys got to the front of the net to, to get goals in and around the goal mouth area? Definitely. I mean, if you look at game one, again, I'll keep saying it, game one, but um, we lost battles at, at both that fronts. So uh, that was an emphasis for us. What did the discussion center around uh, this morning, uh, Zach, in terms of being able to carry what you did yesterday through into game three to, to take a lead? Uh, just never too high, never too low. Um, it's going to be an even harder game tomorrow night. I mean, we get smacked seven three, and then we come out and do the same thing. So, um, you got to expect they're going to respond. Their building's going to be rocking. It's going to be an even harder game for us. Zach, how do you personally manage those kind of ups and downs? Um, you're just aware of it as a team, and um, try to reset the mindset and um, kind of focus, and just one game at a time. What was your sense of the, the star guys? They faced the most pressure and. They had a huge night last night. Just wondering, what, what do you pick up from them? It's definitely nice when they're leading the way. It sets the tempo for everyone else. Um, gives you more energy out there seeing them you know, compete and, and get on the board. Because of the way the two games work, can you kind of put yourself in Tampa's shoes now knowing how they feel, kind of similar to how you guys probably felt after game one? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And to that point, I think that's why it's going to be an even harder game tomorrow night going into that building. You've only been here a year, but what did you see about this team's ability in a uh, Foreign and a hostile environment on the road, like it's going to be uh, in Game Three. I mean, guys have dealt with it a lot. I know just seeing videos of even JT going back to the island, him getting booed, I, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, these guys have dealt with it, and and they're professionals about it. What was it like in that third period when the, you know fans were kind of getting in uh, and under the skin of the Lightning players and the Fox? Like, are you guys kind of aware of just kind of the craziness that was happening in the third period? A little bit, but you just try to tune it out and, and focus on the game. I know we asked you about Nice when he signed and he adjusted with the NCAA. What do you think of his first four games now and what you watched that game? He's been great. Um, I mean, last night he, he could have scored a few goals. You look at that play where he cut back and took the puck to the net. Um, definitely going to make a name for himself doing things like that. And he's been great for us. Are you guys impressed with his play down low? He's, he's not getting knocked around a little bit. Anymore. Yeah. Definitely, it's crazy. He's only 20 years old, and he's able to protect the puck like that. It's, it's really impressive. What impact did uh, Geo's tilt have uh, in the first period early to set the tone last night? It was huge for us. I know everyone was pretty fired up. Um, Bogosian's a big guy, and I think Geo handled himself pretty well. What's it like going up against that Lightning fourth line? It's tough. I mean, um, seasoned guys that have won cups and been to the finals many times. They know what it takes, and they play physical. Um, it's just a matter of trying to match that physicality and win that matchup. Do you play poker against Ilya on the planes or anything? You said he, he relaxed by <laughs> watching a lot of poker on the off days. No, no, no. I don't. I'm not in. The, I don't. I don't like to gamble. So, <laughs> <laughs> had a bad experience at summer camp when I was like 13. <laughs> what so I, I, uh, I was at like some Minnesota hockey camp, and I was playing the older kids in pool getting my show around and I had to call my dad and he had to wire me some money to the camp. <laughs> <laughs> so after that debacle, I, I stayed away from gambling. Did you hear about it from your dad? 
What was that? Did you hear about oh, your dad? Yeah, he was pissed. But <laughs> what, what do you think of that Corey Perry guy? Play I mean, him. it's tough to play against. I mean, you know, he stirs the pot a lot. He's a good player. He's, you know, he's one of those guys that I was talking about that's been to the finals, you know, so many times. So um, just got to match his intensity, you know. A little bit of everything in your first couple of Stanley Cup playoff games. Like, what, what have you learned about what this is all about? Yeah, uh, building was rocking last night. Uh, we had a good response and um, you know, nice to even up the series. What was the biggest difference game one, game two? Uh, I think just urgency right off the bat. Uh, obviously, you know, they went out to a three nothing lead in the first game, and we came out to a three nothing good lead in the second game. So, uh, you know, our start's obviously going to be important moving forward here. What allowed you guys to move the puck better last night? Too? Uh, I think just our pace was uh, was a lot better, and um, our support was better. Uh, we worked for each other a little bit better to get open for each other, and. Um, you know, we got through the neutral zone and, and got on their D. So I uh, spent a lot of time in their end. It was good. How, how do you feel on the momentum or carry the momentum over if you think that's even kind of something possible within games of the, the series? Yeah, just uh, once again, refocus for uh, game three. And like I said, just focus on the start and one shift at a time. You're also getting your first taste of the playoff hockey against Corey Perry in particular. Uh, what's it like to play against him and, and to resist doing what you really want to do sometimes after a whistle? Yeah, you know, he's been an effective player, and our, our job is to, you know, uh, play him hard and play him smart. And uh, he's uh, had a couple goals the first couple games, so he's, uh, you know, obviously been a factor for them, and um, just keep playing him hard. How much confidence does it uh, put into the team that when you guys needed a response most, it was all the guys that have to carry the team that stepped up when it mattered most? Yeah, you know, those guys have been, been doing it all year, and, um, you know, it's it great to see him doing it again last night, and obviously, uh, they're special players, and they drive this team. And um, you know, the rest of us uh, have been contributing as well. So it's uh, you know, it takes a full uh, you know four four lines and sixty and goaltender. So uh, we did that last night. And just need to continue moving forward. Hey Jake, I know it's a really small sample size, but what have you thought of Nines in his four games and last night making his playoff debut? Yeah, uh, you know, he's uh, coming in after playing you know very high leverage games in college. Obviously, it's a different uh, skill set and different pace, but um, you know, he's. Doesn't look out of place by any means, and um, even in practice, trying to you know take away time and space down low. He's real good along the boards. He's real quick. Obviously, a big body, so um, that suits the uh, the pro game pretty well. What's the biggest challenge presented by Kucherov? Uh, I mean, he's a super dynamic player. He can shoot the puck. He can make any pass out there. He's great on his forehand, backhand. Um, he's got to be aware of the speed away from the puck when he's got the puck, because he uh, tends to find guys uh, you know pretty well, obviously, and. Um, Dynamic player, just uh, try to take away his time and space. Ilya was saying he kind of blew off steam on the day off between games by watching a lot of poker. Do you play with him on the planes or all? Or are you a card guy? Yeah, uh, a couple times here and there I'll hop in on the poker game. Me and Laugh actually play some cribbage on the plane. What, what, what's your card game style, I guess? What are your, what's your game there? Are you good? Uh, cribbage? Yes. Uh, I think our series right now is like 18 16. He's, uh, he's in the lead, so hopefully this flight I uh, catch up to him. What do you make of how Ilya responded last night? Yeah, not surprised. You know, he's been steady all year, and at least from the time I've been here, and uh, super composed back there. So, um, you know, as expected. What did you guys take from how last night went as you move into Game Three in Tampa? I mean, I think it's obviously the response that we wanted, um, but you know, it's all about having to go out and do it again. Obviously, they're going to be ready to go, and um, you know, we just got to find another level. You always expect the team's best in the playoffs, but can you kind of relate to probably what they're going through right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you look at last year, it was kind of similar, right? These, uh, you know, a bit of a roller coaster, uh, you know, back and forth, but, um, you know, it's just a bit of a chess game, I'd say. And, um, you know, like I said, obviously, it's a great response from our, our group last night. And, um, you know, the hardest part is going out there and, and doing it again, especially uh, against a team like that, that, you know, they're going to be ready to go. What did you Austin, like most? When you, um when you have a player who seems to have a, like a gift for anticipating what an opponent is going to do um, and, and causing turnovers, I'm, I'm thinking particularly of Mitch right now. Is that just a perception or instinct, or is there a tell that you look for about what a player is going to do? I mean, I think it's just instinct for the most part, honestly, and just kind of reading off, uh, reading off the play. Do you look at the player's stick or at his eyes? Anything well, like you personally? What would you do? I mean, I think you just kind of put yourself in their position and what you would want to do um, uh, with the poker in a certain situation, just kind of try to read off that. Austin, uh, everyone across the board last night was better for Ilya on out, but 
what it means to the bench, see the fourth line contribute with a goal and, and bring their game up as well. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Obviously, you always uh, love to see that, and especially, you know, this time of year, um, you know, things can be so tight, especially, um, you know, throughout the lineup and stuff. So when you get in contributions from, from uh, you know, different guys uh, throughout the lineup, obviously, it's a very positive thing. What did you like most, Austin, about uh, what the group was able to put forward last night? I mean, I just think our start was, was good, and, um, you know, just the... I think we just raised our level, the intensity, everything, uh, details. Um, you know, we didn't uh, allow as much access, I think, to to our net, which was you know really important and obviously a, an issue for us in the first game. And um, you know, I just thought that um, you know we played with a bit more purpose and uh, and structure too. What does your line the, uh... change when Callie's on? Um, I don't think it changes too much. Obviously, it adds another element. I mean, he's obviously got a really nice release, and he's a, he's a great shooter. But, um, you know, he's a really smart player, and he does a lot of uh, little things uh, really well in, in D zone and in O zone. And, um, you know, you just try to read off uh, read off that. But, I mean, I think we've played enough with each other now that we have pretty good chemistry, and, um, you know, especially with Mitch out there as well. So can just read off each other and just go play. What do you think of the power play so far? What do you think of Willie's goal? You guys were able to get that switch going and uh, the great personnel on and, and get a six on five. Yeah, I mean, I think special teams is obviously a huge factor uh, in this series. And, um, you know, I think two teams that have good power plays. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's just kind of a, a chess match back and forth and, um, you know, just trying to take what's, what's given to you. And, um, you know, obviously that was a big goal uh, with the six on five uh, last night and something I think we've been trying to work on and uh, trying to capitalize on those situations and those opportunities. So, um, you know, it was good to see that, obviously. Key play by Brody on that goal too, right, to the neutral zone. Looks like he's had a space and then makes something happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you pretty much, yeah, yeah, coming to the neutral zone, but yeah. yeah you just answered that question for me. Thanks. I every word it just said off. How impressive is Willie's ability to kind of change the speed of a shot? It seems like you can rip one or you can kind of feather one and catch a goal you kind of sleep in a bit. Yeah, I, I think he's just so good at, uh, you know, ho holding onto the puck and, and just kind of taking what's what's given to him. So, I mean, you look at his, his goal the the first game, uh, I mean, it wasn't a laser, but I think he, he realized that there was a good screen there and, and he just got the puck through. And then obviously last night he just he just blew it by. So, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, two different uh, goals and, I mean, obviously, it's just a skill set that's uh, impressive to see. So, when it comes to this time of year, you know, this team is often judged win or lose against sort of the burden of its own history from games that were played before you were born. You've been here a long time. How have you come to sort of cope or sort of live with that? I mean, there's nothing that I can do or we can do to, you know, change the past. It's about what's in front of us, uh, what's here today. And, uh, and I think that's just the main focus in this group uh, is taking it a game at a time. And, um, you know, just being in the moment, I think, is the most important part for us. Can't change what's happened in the past. How one last one. How did you feel Ryan moving to 3C and John back in the middle there? Just how do you feel that changed the dynamic? Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously spreads out, uh, you know, a little bit of depth throughout the lineup. But, um you know, factory can obviously kind of play, play all over, play wherever he plays in all situations. So um, you know, he's he's a really important piece for us. And you know, I think JT kind of feels the same. He's probably a little bit more comfortable playing uh, in the middle, which is you know where he's predominantly played most of his career. So um, you know, I just think it gives us uh, a different look. But uh, you know, obviously it was a it was a good working for us last night. So we just want to continue to continue to roll. Sheldon, you mentioned a couple times last night, got to be better, even better than last night moving forward. In what areas do you think the group can be? Well, I think there's, there's a number of things. I mean, I think your, your execution can always get better in all areas. I mean, obviously their forecheck pressure will continue to be a, a major focal point of the series. Uh, so our ability to get through that. But, you know, we took two penalties in the first period that we, we would like to, you know, minimize. Maybe you can give them one, but, you know, we... we we gave him a freebie there. So there's just little things like that, you know, that you can get better. But it's just more just making the general point that the series is just going to get harder. You know, uh, we're going to get on the road here now. It's going to get harder. So the mindset for us should be nothing other than continuing to get better because that's just what's going to be required. We often talk about how the hockey changes from regular season to playoffs, but how much in series from games one, two, three, how deeper you go, does it get more intense, more difficult? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's definitely a lot to to say about that. I think uh, 
I think things just level off, and there's obviously a lot of emotion that goes into playing in the playoffs. Maybe that leads to some of these games, the way that they've gone here in games one and two for us. I don't know if that's necessarily been the case in, in other series. I've been able to watch too much, but just looking at some of the scores, they don't necessarily seem to be the same as what's been happening in ours, but emotions are really high, and you tend to have big swings that way, and then things level off. and. I think you just go into each game expecting that it's going to be your your typical uh, playoff type game. One goal swings it either way, and you know any play at any time could make the difference. Like that's how you go into every game, and then sometimes it uh, you know it breaks open the way it has here. But our, certainly our mindset going in every night and in tomorrow in particular is that it's going to be a grind. So prepare for that. Sheldon, every line was better last night. Would you? Uh Thing of the, the work the, uh, the camp group did and uh, how do they take that forward on the game three? Yeah, I th that's a really good question because I, I, I think that those guys, to me, made a big difference in the game last night, you know, especially relative to where they were at in game one. I thought it was a real issue for us in game one that a line like those guys that we had come to rely on as much as we have uh, through the regular season, they did such a great job for us. So you're trusting in them and putting them in the similar spots uh, to come through, and, and, and they didn't. Uh, so then it puts a little bit more heat and throws you out of rhythm on, in other spots and matchups and, and uh, deployment and such. Uh, but I thought last night those guys played really well, and the goal they scored is a great example of what we need and what can be a major difference maker for us. You know, in that you put them out in the defensive zone against the opposition's best players, and they drive the puck down the ice and then bring it to the net and put one in for us. It essentially puts the game away for us. Uh, so that's a great example there. I mean, the other lines were really good too. Obviously, the Riley line gave us a really good night, and that helped tremendously. But for me, when the camp line is going like that, it allows a lot of other things to to happen for us, and it's going to have to remain that way. I mean, Tampa's fourth line has has been very good in these two games that we've played. So, you know, we're going to need more of that from Camper for sure. Sheldon, speaking of how much, uh, Sheldon, that Corey Perry on that fourth line has been in the middle of a bunch of stuff already in this series, as you would expect. Um, you know, do you talk to your guys about, you know, trying to have some restraint around him? There was a penalty last night, of course, uh, involving uh, Jake and, and him. Yeah, for sure. We, I mean, we talk about that all the time about after whistle and, and you know, can't give this team free power plays, but certainly uh, Barry in particular has the ability to kind of raise the temperature and, and he's, you know, through his whole career has found a way to get those calls to go in his favor. And, uh, you know, he, he's as good as anybody in the league at it, that he can stoke the fire. He had come out of it on the other side somewhat unscathed. Um, so yeah, we get, with him in particular, we gotta we gotta really hold that line. But those guys have done a good job you know, during the play. It's not just the after whistle stuff for drawing penalties. You know, they, they they've done a really good job for their for their group. And like we're talking about with camp for our line or with our team, you know, when the, the, that line is playing like that for them, and it really helps them, especially if they're gonna go back with home ice here now. So um, yeah, we gotta do a good job against those guys for sure. Um, I'm sorry. Two How important more questions? is. Uh, his previous experience in that building last year, you guys were in a you know, position to, uh, to win uh, the game. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know all that stuff helps for sure. I do think each season is is a different. A uh, different experience, though, and we have to treat it as such. Obviously, we're going into this uh, in a different spot here. You know, we're, last time we were heading out on the road and coming off of a, a loss on home ice. So these are the different emotions that you're managing through through the playoffs, and that's what I'm talking about with us having to continue to get better here, knowing that uh, it, it will certainly get harder. You know, and there's still moments in that game last night, you know, whether it's early in the game, you know, where they're, they were coming and uh, carry on play for a good part of that first period. And the first period really is pretty even affair all the way through. If you take out the special team situations, whether it's the power play goal or the six on five goal or the face off goal, like open play, it's, it's a very even even game in the first period there. So, uh, again, we're, we're very mindful of all of that and, and that. Uh, you know, they'll be better, things will get harder. So whether we've had experience in there or not, just we've got to have the right mindset to, to make sure we're, we're continuing to get better with our game. A lot of guys yesterday questions. before the game were asked about sort of about that pressure, right? Like game one had gone sideways in a way that I think a lot of people foresaw. What might you have said to sort of assuage that or help them maybe 
respond the way that they did to ease some of that? Well, it was because things went so sideways the way they did and so unexpected. It was somewhat easy to get the team, you know, uh, back refocused because it was. It's not like we played a great game and just got overwhelmed. It was. It was a game that uh, we hadn't played in, in quite uh, quite some time. Caught a lot of us off of guard, myself included. You know, we played such a high standard. And obviously, expect that to continue to rise in the playoffs rather than go the other way. Um, but just reframing it and showing them, you know, where we fell short and, and uh, countering it with, you know, what we look like when we're at our best and just uh, getting to get to work to that. Sometimes when you get pushed the way we did in game one and embarrassed like that, it can just kind of snap things back into place. So I think it was somewhat easy for us to, to do that. And we've got great confidence in our group to be able to respond in that situation. As I say, this is a whole other challenge now going out on the road. We're in a best of five series and we don't have home ice here now. So that's that's kind of the uh, uh, the reality of it. So we have to make sure that our group is, is recognizing that the urgency continues to rise.